Welcome. This video will serve as a brief introduction to JVM agents and a guide to install and configure the CA SysView JVM data collector agent in JVMs running on ZOS. Throughout this video, you will learn what a JVM agent is, what the CA SysView JVM data collector agent is, how the CA SysView JVM data collector agent works, what functions the CA SysView JVM data collector agent performs, how to install the CA SysView JVM data collector agent, and how to configure the CA SysView JVM data collector agent. What is a JVM agent? A JVM agent is a separate piece of code started when the JVM initializes. It should be noted that the JVM agent is not part of the Java application. The agent may run as its own thread within the JVM. Note SysU's implementation does this. The agent can interface with the JVM through an API called the JVM Tool Interface, also known as the JVM TI. The agent has visibility into the JVM and the application the JVM is running. Thus, the agent can monitor things like storage usage or thread performance, among several other things. The agent can also perform other administrative functions within the JVM, such as dynamically altering the JVM runtime options. An agent is typically started with the agent lib or the agent path option. For example, if the Java application was being started from the command line, then one of these options might be specified on the Java command line program. Consider this diagram. The red box denotes a JVM running within a ZOS address space. Within the JVM, there can and will be several threads. The application that the JVM was requested to start will have a main entry point thread. The application may have started several other threads to perform various work. In addition, the JVM starts its own threads that perform JVM level functions, garbage collection for example. If the JVM was instructed to start an agent thread, an agent thread will also be present in the JVM. The agent can register to be notified of certain events. The agent can query certain attributes about the JVM. And the agent can set certain attributes within the JVM. What is the JVM data collector agent? Starting with CA SysView version 15.0, a JVM agent is shipped in the product libraries. We refer to the JVM agent as the JVM data collector agent. The agent is packaged as a pair of Unix system service based shared object modules. The shared object that ends with the number 4 is the 64-bit version of the agent. This version must be used for 64-bit JVM runtimes. The shared object that ends with the number 1 is the 31-bit version of the agent. Likewise, this version must be used for 31-bit JVM runtimes. The agent is responsible for the serving of requests from SysView. Functions within the agent could be driven as a result of a SysView user session requesting data from the JVM. Functions within the agent could also be driven as regular sample data collection on behalf of a SysU data collector task. How does the JVM data collector agent work? Let's again consider a JVM running within a ZOS address space. The JVM was started with the SysU JVM data collector agent. Let's also consider a SysView user that wishes to see information about the active JVM. The user navigates to the JVM list command to locate the JVM they are interested in. The JVM the user is interested in is now located. While on the JVM list command, the user can verify that the JVM data collector agent is active from the MON column. MON, short for monitor, indicates if a JVM data collector agent is active in the JVM. The column will display MON when the agent is active in the JVM and will be blank when the agent is not active in the JVM. The user drills into the desired JVM to see the available commands with the line command assist command, question mark. The user might be interested in thread performance in the JVM. The user locates the threads line command and selects it. At this point, the user is requesting detailed information from the JVM. This information will be obtained by the SysView JVM data collector agent running within the JVM. The SysView user session will send a request to retrieve thread information from the JVM data collector agent. The JVM data collector agent then in turn collects the appropriate data from the JVM. In this case, the agent queries and collects thread statistics from all threads within the JVM. After all data has been collected, the data is packaged and sent from the agent back to the user session that requested the data. Once the data is received by the user session from the agent, it is parsed and output to the display as shown here. Note that since the user requested information on all threads in the JVM and the JVM data collector agent happens to be a thread, we can see the agent thread on this display. 
the thread named CA Sysview External Data Interface is the JVM Data Collector Agent thread. What functions does the JVM Data Collector Agent perform? The JVM menu in Sysview displays most of the commands that require the JVM Data Collector Agent to be installed in order to view detailed JVM information. These commands can be viewed on the menu JVM command. Some commands do not require the JVM Data Collector Agent to be installed. These are typically higher level commands that do not drill into the JVM to gather detailed information. For example, the JVM list command that shows all active JVMs in the system does not require the agent. It uses another mechanism to discover all active JVMs that will not be covered in this video. The JVM vers command that tracks all versions of Java used in the system also does not require the JVM data collector agent to be installed. Again, it is commands that gather detailed information from within the JVM that require the JVM data collector agent. Detailed information from the JVM might be JVM options and arguments passed to the JVM when it started. It could be information on the JVM management beans that are in use. It could be information on JVM heap usage. It could be information on the JVM memory manager. And the list goes on. Here is the CA Sysview menu JVM command. It displays all of the JVM commands included with the JVM component of Sysview. Note again, the JVM list and JVM verse command do not require the JVM data collector agent to be installed within a JVM to discover the JVM and detect the Java version the JVM is running. Most other commands listed on the menu will require each JVM that you wish to see more detailed information for to have the JVM data collector agent installed and configured. How is the JVM data collector agent installed? All of the JVM data collector agent installation is handled by the install process. The following will describe the steps that were taken during the install. First, a USS directory structure must be created to hold the agent binaries. This part of the install process is completed by the inst2 job. The job that completed this can be found in the unzipped sampjcl library in the inst2 member. It first creates a new ZFS to hold information. The ZFS is then mounted. Lastly, the directory structure is built within the ZFS that sysview expects to see. The agent shared objects are later copied into the appropriate directory with an SMPE receive apply accept of the entire product in install job inst3. It is important to note that this job only temporarily mounts the ZFS. The ZFS should be permanently added to the mount table in the sys1.parmlib member btx parm so it can persist in future IPLs. The ZFS should be configured to be mounted as read-write only on one system where maintenance will be applied to sysview so it can be updated with new shared objects that are delivered by a PTF. The ZFS should be mounted as read-only on all other systems so it may be shared with as many systems within the sysplex as required. The next major step is to copy the SMPE managed shared objects into a runtime directory. This part of the install process is completed by the inst6 job. The job that completed this can be found in the unzipped sampjcl library in the inst6 member. The job will copy the SMPE managed shared objects from its directory into another directory within the same ZFS. There is no need to create a runtime ZFS. The SMPE and runtime can exist in the same ZFS, but they will need to be under different directories. You may find that in some cases, the JVM will require daemon level authority for the agent. The job has an option to set the shared objects with the program authority attribute if requested. If a JVM requires the agent to run with daemon level security, but the shared object was not set with the program authority attribute, then an error will be observed from the JVM. The error message will be the BPXP014I message as seen here. JVMs that are configured to run the JVM data collector agent should point to the runtime shared object created with this job. Let's consider the following diagram to help better understand the installation process of the JVM data collector agent. You are installing and maintaining sysu from an LPAR we will call MVS1. During the install, job inst2 creates the sysu ZFS. While inst2 dynamically mounts the ZFS for the life of the IPL, the ZFS must be permanently mounted in the sys1.parmlib member BPX parm. The mount definition for the system sysview will be maintained from must be mode read-write on this system and only this system. inst2 also adds the directory structure for the agent shared objects to reside in. The low-level directory structure will be cnm4jvmd slash ca. During the next install job, inst3, the entire sysview product libraries are received, applied, and accepted. 
During this process, the SMPE managed shared objects libgsvoagt1.so and libgsvoagt4.so are copied into the USS directory. Lastly, during the install process, the SysU data collector agent runtime is created. This process is completed by copying the SMPE shared objects from their directory into another directory within the same ZFS. The low-level directory structure will be runtime slash JVM data slash bin. Note that if the program control option is set in the int6 job, the low-level directory structure will be runtime slash JVM data slash bin PC to indicate the shared objects that reside in the directory have the program control attributes set for them. It is advisable to create both sets of directories in the event they are needed in the future. When deploying the JVM data collector ZFS to other systems, the ZFS created by INST2 can be reused. The only difference is that the sys1.parmlib member BPX Parm must be configured for the deployed LPAR to mount the sysu ZFS as read only. This same process can be repeated for as many systems as the JVM data collector agent is required to be configured on. Again, to reiterate, only one ZFS dataset is required and can be shared between multiple systems, but only one system can mount the ZFS as read-write. Every other system must mount the ZFS as read-only. How is the JVM data collector agent configured? JVMs can be started in several different ways. For example, running the Java program from the command line is very different than running Java in a CICS region. Samples and directions for many types of JVMs are provided in SysU documentation. There are differences in the way JVMs are configured depending on the type of JVM. In all cases, to configure an agent into a JVM, the configuration will need to be updated to indicate that the agent is to be started and where the agent binaries reside. The JVM type should be determined so the correct set of instructions can be referenced for that JVM type. Since a JVM can run in 31-bit or 64-bit mode, so must the agent. Two versions, a 31-bit version and a 64-bit version, are provided by SysView. The agent used must match the runtime of the JVM. The agent path option will need to be inserted into the JVM configuration options to point to the installed agent shared object. After the JVM configuration has been updated, the JVM should be started to ensure there are no errors. Lastly, the agent installation can be verified with SysU to determine if the agent is correctly functioning. Let's take a look at a JZOS batch launcher as an example to better illustrate how to configure the SysU JVM data collector agent. The JZOS batch launcher program starts a JVM from a standard JCL input stream as a batch job or started task. The program invoked from the JCL is either JVM LDM80 for 31-bit JVMs or JVM LDM86 for 64-bit JVMs. It is important to note the version as the JVM data collector agent must match the addressing mode of the JVM. Once you locate the JCL that you wish to run the JVM data collector agent in, find the standard environment DD. You will need to concatenate an appropriately structured agent path option to the existing IJO environment variable. IJO stands for IBM Java Options. The final statement might look something like this. The first part of this statement indicates we are setting the IJO environment variable to whatever is to the right of the equal sign. The next part of the statement, the dollar IJO, is referencing what has already been set in the IJO environment variable. It will effectively concatenate whatever was set in the IJO environment variable before the statement was read to whatever follows in the remainder of the statement. The last part of the statement is the new agent path option. The agent path option will need to point to the JVM data collector agent runtime shared object that was created in the install job inst6. In this case, we have determined that the JVM is running in 64-bit addressing mode, so the 64-bit version of the agent is being used. After the agent path option has been configured into the JVM, the JVM should be started to verify the agent has been correctly configured. As previously mentioned, the JVM data collector agent configuration can be validated on the JVM list display. A value of mon in the mon column indicates the JVM data collector agent is correctly monitoring the JVM. There is some additional JVM data collector agent configuration items that should be covered. Since many JVMs can look very similar from the outside observer, it may be helpful to assign an application name to the JVM so the application the JVM is running can be easily identified on the JVM list display. Recall our JZOS example. To add an application name to the JVM, we will need to update the standard environment DD. 
The application name is created by adding an environment variable called sysview underscore application and setting it to a value of your choosing. Here is an example. The left side of the statement is the environment variable. The right side of the statement is the value you select for the application name to be displayed on JVM list. The sysview underscore application environment variable then will need to be exported. Immediately following the definition for the sysview underscore application environment variable, there will need to be an export statement that looks like this. The sysview underscore application environment variable can be verified on the JVM list display. The application column should reflect the value you have selected. Note that if you do not specify an application name, sysview will assign one for it in the form gsv underscore job name underscore process ID. There is more configuration that will not be covered in detail in this video. They are mentioned here for awareness. There is documentation available for the additional configuration should it be required. The JVM Data Collector Agent has the ability to create log files for diagnostic purposes. This is off by default and typically will only be turned on at the direction of a support engineer. The JVM Data Collector Agent has the ability to display information about thread contention as long as the JVM thread contention monitoring has been enabled there is an option to have the JVM enable this monitoring. The JVM Data Collector Agent has the ability to display information about thread CPU usage as long as the JVM has thread CPU monitoring enabled. There is an option to have the JVM enable this monitoring. The JVM Data Collector Agent defaults to connect to a sysview with a subsystem ID of GSVX. If your sysview installation runs with a non-default subsystem ID, the subsystem ID of the agent will need to be updated. That concludes this video. For more detailed information about CA SysView Performance Management, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can visit product documentation, support, communities, or see the learning paths. Thank you.